kind of share from a different perspective of exactly why this is kind of happening. That's why I really picked this topic. And so we're going to kind of tether I into the spiritual that. value versus the world and what it's doing as a projection based on its lack of ability to process why we're going through this. So there's actually an intention to work why we're going through this, of course. And I'll try to connect this in a way that um, I hope it's not too bumpy a road. If it, if I make too many sharp turns, then uh, Carrie, I'll heave a life jacket. Uh, We're used up. to bumpy roads lately. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Actually, we need, yeah, well, we single everyone out because this is the language of honor. And so yes. everyone here is a resonance frequency of, of restoration and responsibility and accountability to a point. And this is what we're really going to talk about today, about what this is. And I hope this isn't going to be too bumpy. Like I say, I'm going to be jumping. We're talking uh, a couple thousand pages of files and then I can't read it through. And I don't want to per se read it through in the context of layering it of what the Spirit's showing me to build it as a, as a construct. And it, it's a mirror back onto us. And if I show you the work in really its true essence, it becomes a little boggy. So I'm going to be jumping around from about five files to make a point of who you are as a mere reflection of potentiality. And this is why, why do we study Hebrew um, and, and, um, and Aramaic, you know, as a frequency, a potential? Why do we do this? What is this thing that is full? Um, it's a currency, actually. And so why do we have this divine exchange with it? What, what is it as a, as a sum measure? So. But before that, um, I want to say thank you very much to all um, for the time. I know time is valuable. Um, we are in an amazing season right now. I don't care what the world's doing. We're going to touch a little bit on the topic of why the world is doing that because it's directly connected to the frequency of Hebrew. Um, but from our house to your house, again, to um, to everyone for um, just sharing your valuable time and, um, and your heart space and and everything that's inclusive in that. So again, to that Rabbi. You are so loved by us. You are so loved. So we're going to start with, um, I don't know where everyone is in, in the frequency of the language. I know some of us are learning. Um, I go more <laughs> into the sod level. I, um, and so I saw that, Alan. <laughs> we're going to um, extrapolate out. There's some concepts here that we need to get free of the mind. And I know, again, connected to the Riveras, I know you guys are familiar with this because it's like what you do to take the body in a higher frequency. And we shake really, the words are there just to bridge into the essence of what the spirit organically does. And so we just catch things and we, we move, we whiff into the breath of what the spirit does. And so I'm going to be doing that from a different perspective, yet similar, because it is all the same frequency of resonance because that's what it is. So we're going to start, and Carrie's going to share a file with you. And we need to first realize that um, we have a mindset that has been, um, for the majority of the world, we've had a mindset that's been ensnared into a program, per se, of a limited perspective of what the Bible is as, a, as, a, as really um, a blueprint of transaction. Um, so we're going to talk from, because the whole Bible is really a paradox. And, and so please, if I lose you on this, just close your eyes and just, just allow it to kind of present itself in whatever degree. Because I know, I fully realize that we're all seen from where we are in our current moment. We've all ingathered sums of total that uh, present themselves as our current moment of expression. That's yeah. all we can be. Um, until we move into a greater reality and partner with that reality, um, we are simply where we are. And that's beautiful, lovely, and perfect. So if I see anything, Carrie's going to be watching the monitor, please, I want this to be interactive, um, where I, I, my heart is not to release the information. My heart is to interact. I'll stop wherever I need to stop in this so we can bring clarity of resolve. I don't want people leaving going like, what was that? I'm lost. <laughs> I'm nowhere near this thing. Um, right? Because this is where we're moving into a language that is beyond. 
by definition, Hebrew means beyond. Yep. It's not. So you can actually speak Hebrew and not be the essence of Hebrew. That's right. There's a difference. And this is, this is the spirit essence within us that processes the frequency of potentiality because that's the intention that we become the essence of what it is as a word, not per se speaking. Speaking is the blessing, but speaking it actually in true definition of being a Hebrew in the true definition means the silent song within and you're the compression of radiance and in that you glow. Mm. So good. I felt that. <laughs> So this is a lovely language a potential that is given to all of us that comprehend discipline and order and a structure that was given to us for the opportunity to experience that which we already are. We already were in a stance, in a, in a, in a place, position, but because of that level of knowing, we, we really hadn't gone through the expression of experience. And that's why the earth was created in Genesis was purpose for the expression of the experience. So we know already which we are, right? This is what we're doing right now. And if we realize that, then the Hebrews were really, the journey of the Hebrews was only supposed to be from Bereshit to Shemot, from Genesis to Exodus. That was it. So the rest of the books are really a prompting into the, the, the origins definition of journey, better sheet Genesis to Shemot, Exodus. That's it. And so we're going to touch on that. That was what the, that's as simply, as simply put as I can say that what the Hebrew is as a frequency that just become this, and we're going to define what Bereshit is, and we're going to define up what Exodus is, so we know the process of them between, because everything of a Hebrew knows the well of between the pieces. That's Indeed. you. Indeed. I will be speaking coded, not to confuse you, but maybe I am, and I'll tell you why I said that, because everything is an oxymoron, everything is a paradox, until it produces this measure of intention, it will draw you into the confusion until you find its resolve. And it, as a matter of fact, that's kind of how parables work. Parables are meant to fry your brain circuitry so that it can speak to your heart instead. Because the, the ego wants to take the information and try to figure it out and analyze it and put it in little compartments when really the essence of the frequency that is being released is for us to get right here. Yeah. Because all the answers come from here. So it's that provoking. Pamela, did you have a question? Okay. I figured out the button. Um, so... When you say from Genesis to Exodus, does that mean that we this the journey that we're on now collectively is that journey through the wilderness? Is that is that what we're experiencing at this point? Yes, I'll, excellent. Yes, question. yeah, good question. I'll bring clarity to that because really uh, the five books of Moshe, which means to draw out, Moshe means to draw yourself out, as he did. Um, and we're get, we'll get into that. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but yes, absolutely that. Uh, when you go into Bemidbar and uh, Le, um, Vaikra, and we're sort of talking Leviticus and Numbers, all of that really what that is, is that's like um, a language on the backside. It says, I will draw you out into the wilderness so you would learn to speak the word so you become the resonance of its intention. Well, I just walk through from Leviticus into um, into Deuteronomy, into Numbers, really, because that's what we say that the, the, the word in English, but we're missing the frequency of really what it's requiring. And so there's a little narrative there, and we're going to get to that this afternoon, this morning. We're going to jump really quick and just title connect like a like a caboose to an engine and go from um um from genesis um, um better sheet into an um deuteronomy and so we're going to connect that as a, and then we're going to see what that says and because and because every single words they have meanings to them and it literally is a journey of frequency that is totally obfuscated totally obfuscated by the english words so and when you can start seeing it it's all of a sudden it gives you a clarity of vision to give you a direction in which to head and most of you guys innately you guys are already doing this you are so this is more more and more confirmation yeah. especially if you're spirit led you're already on that path. Most, I would say most, because I don't know you intimately in the degree of what you're processing, but I would say most likely I can say in truth that most of us are fulfilling 
the role of intention. Now, this goes back into the law of the sea, of what's going on in the world. The law of the land produces the law of the sea. But the law of the sea, as in flight, is the same law. It's yaw, pitch, and roll. We, by the, by, by the law, by the law, yaw, by the law of yaw, fulfill the role to be sealed as pitch. That's the language of navigation. So we're going to be moving in a narrative that's going to maybe like, oh, I'm like just kind of tweak the head a little bit so we see a little differently from an old paradigm. But most of us, I'll get to that question. Most of us have and are fulfilling the role already organically. That's the lovely part of this, is that if we comprehend moral standing and ethics of right value and establish ourselves as a disciplined order and we're walking in that intention, then most of us are more Hebrew than those that are speaking the language per se. And I, I'm not against the people speaking the language. I'm just saying that those are, it becomes weaponized or it's not into the calculation of calibration and therefore it negates um, what is being offered as its potential because it goes into the well within. So, so don't beat yourself up by what you, you, you think you don't know. You know more than what you are really, what we're reflecting. And this is the season we're in right now. We're in the season of war. And that is solely because war hasn't been defined correctly because we serve a God of war. It's our reflection rendered com, com, com correctly, it simply is talking about war by definition and etymology only means confusion. We're going to get into this too. But it's meant for the inward reflection that the outward would manifest its intention. That is peace. And, and so we're going to, again, it's an oxymoron and it's a paradox, really what war is. But for those that haven't become through the process of what war is through confusion and rendered it clear as a resolve to find the way of peace, they are most likely going to use it as an outward manifestation and rage. This is what's happening in the nations right now. They are not enacting the order of discipline of rightly rendering down confusion to the resolve of shalem, peace. And so what did they do? What does the ego do? What does a narcissist do? He points the finger outwardly and say, because of you, right? Or you're encroaching upon my boundary and my border, and therefore, what well, my boundary and my border as a sovereign is within me through the manifest of me becoming the reality through confusion, I'm resolved as peace. War and peace take the same space. They're omnipresent. And I'm going to define this because we're now we're going to go into the paradox of what omnipresent is. Any questions so far? No, we're all good. Okay, so can you bring up, please, Carrie, the paradox of being present as beyond Hebrew? Yep, I can. So in the title alone, it's an oxymoron. We need to really, well, we don't, well, I do. I, you don't need to do anything. I, I'm not, this is only sharing from my perspective. But the paradox of being present as beyond Hebrew, well, that's, Everything in this language is pointing to a mirror as mother would point to father and say, because of you, I am. And they'd say it in the exact same breath at the exact same time. Because of you, I am. I'm present. Yeah. Being Hebrew is being present. But we need to define really the oxymoron of being present because that's such a click word now that's saying we need to call ourselves. We need to be present. We need to be living in the present. Well, let's define present because present is being a Hebrew as a frequency, as a potential, as an intention, as a purpose. So the first word we're looking at right here is um, Iber, Ibri. And it's the word for Hebrew. We're not going to get into the schematics of this. We're going to stay on the blueprint of intention. The schematics are going to go into the inner workings, per se, of what the blueprint is saying. My what? So in other words, he just said, honey. Don't do what you normally do because you're going to just bury them in the letters. <laughs> right. So <laughs> that was coded. <laughs> even though this is relatively deep, we're going to skip a stone oh, over funny. the forensics of who you are. So um, and I'm, I'm speaking specifically to say this is you. We can look at this, but we cannot. I mean, we shouldn't lose sight. It's as you. Everything we're showing here is a mere potential of who we are as a people that are called Hebrew by its essence of frequency. So agree. So we have Ayin, um, Bet, Resh, Yot. Now, you were just like 
Oh, making me chomp at the bit. I know we got we got some <laughs> we got to go some places though. So we look at it. We're looking at, at just the breakdown of what it's connected to. We can see that um, beyond is the Hebrew is connected to a region across beyond, and it's talking about. And there's specific words that I've highlighted here, so we catch these to know it's the way of straight. Now this is the way of the Yasharim. The way of straight is a Hebrew because they know in between mother and father is the way of straight. And you'll see this in Yashir, which is the root of Israel. And a Hebrew is an Israelite. So these, this Israeli, a Hebrew, is a Yasharim, the way of straight. You've gone, Which would be another way of saying that is finding the narrow path between that you find. Everything about this language, if you can really process it, and to process it correctly, it's the same narrative of, of uh, Abraham walking between the pieces. The greatest walking between the pieces is when the nation of Israel, the, the Hebrew, the Hebrews, walk between the two heaves, the two seas. In the Exodus, they walk between the heaves. And in, in etymology, that means the Shemaim, the components of mother and father were heaved up and between them they walked. That was the biggest mikvah in history. And Daryl has a question. Daryl? Yeah. Uh, yeah, just real quick. Um, if, a, if a Hebrew is one from beyond, what are we from beyond of? Well, we're going to get to that. That's a, that's a good, that's, that's can, a. Can I also, can I, can I please do the letters? Just those, just the three letters. Yes. So if we look at the letters on this, that was actually a great question, Daryl. If we look at the letters, we have a letter Ein, which is connected to sight. It has to do with right, purpose. Right. It has to do with um, knowing. And then we have Bet Resh. And Bet Resh in itself, it's pure and innocent. To those who things are pure, everything is pure. But it, it's a word that means purity and innocence. It also means an heir to the throne. It also mm -hmm. means to be winnowed. The Bet is on the inside. So that says that we're talking about those that have this inside work that is going through them. And on the outside is the Ein Resh, which means to stir up and to be awake. So looking at just these three words, yeah. those who see and know the purpose of building themselves on the inside are those who are the pure and innocent ones who have raised themselves up, stirred themselves up, and can see fully beyond that which is in the normal vision. Does that help? Just, gonna, that's just through the letters. I'm going to break this down to connect it. So what we yeah, are going to yeah. see is the forensic works of the amygdala, the hippocampus, the thalamus, of who you are as the temple completed and who sits upon the throne of your temple, war or peace. If it's war, then the adversary still resides in the house. If it's peace, then you've rendered clear confusion, war correctly, and now... You, you're in a master. You're in a master's position. Yeah. And so we're going to try to break this down. So just be a little patient with me here as I, I'm going to try to weave this through. Um, and, and remember, this is you. I'm, I'm talking about the mind of Christ. We're going to end up really realizing that you are and always have been, been able to tap the mind of Christ. And you're a paradox. You are, but you're not because you haven't become yet. A Hebrew is the state of being. Okay, that's the link I needed. Right there. The Hebrew is the state of being through the yeah. process of becoming, Haya. The revelation of inhalation gives yeah. you the insight to know, to be um, spiritually inspired. And in the exhalation, you are the expanse. We live in between the breath of inhalation and the exhalation. There we dwell. That is Haya. And we're going to try to break this down. So before I do that, well... Let's just, I'm going to read through the Aleph okay. Bet from Aleph to Tav in only one and two words connecting the Aleph to the Tav in, so we can see it as a journey of sequential frequency in its potential so we don't just get caught in the letters. So in other words, this would be connecting to what you said about Genesis to, right. from Bereshit to Shemot, what the journey would have been for the first right. two books. This is not inclusive. This is not going into, we've done this as an extrapolation of greater potential, but this is only skipping a stone per se on just so we can quickly really see what Hebrew is as, as a journey and just it's innocent. So really it's just, and I'm, I won't say all of Bet Gimel, I'm just going to um, Maybe Carrie, you can say that's the all if that's the best. Okay, we just, don't need it. Okay, no, just, just so read it this through. is the journey. 
As one, we fortify by building. By the lowering, we are raised. By the drawing in, we are drawn out. Through the Spirit's inspiration, we are divinely expanded, connecting us to the sacred cycle of sowing and reaping. The process that unites by separating and rules by taming. Through this wrestle, we choose, openly grasping, so that we would fulfill with the authority of right order and direction. This calms the rage of chaos, so we would experience the inheritance as progeny. This is all that supports and surrounds. This is to know and to see, to speak and to say and to share the desire of the chase while in the cycle of time, in hopes all would be raised and healed in the inculcative walk that pierces as covenantal love. That's awesome. I felt that. So there's just a, a stone thrown through the language to connect it as a potential. So now this word <clears throat> moving in, and we're gonna try, we're gonna move this through this paradox really quickly, try to move into the other file. Um, it's important that I at least get to the, the thalamus in this so you realize you are building the bridal chamber. You are building the place of encounter, one step at a time through the summation of choice, knowingly or unknowingly. So Eber, the region across, and Carrie was right when she talked like the eye to see as a child again is right in this world. The Hebrew would know the way of the child in the innocence of purity. I have built and I've risen my head by lowering myself, right? Because that's what happened. We lowered ourselves into the experience for the purpose of bowing, right? In, in humility to become that intention. And that's how we recognize one another. That's why I say namaste is really, I recognize you as a fellow sojourner. Um, and we've encountered, and I'm going to share a bit more on that. So let's just move through this word of um, alienate, because it moves into alienation. So you're from beyond. You're By definition of a Hebrew, you're actually an alien. You're not of this world, yet you're in it to experience it. So really, we're talking about um, crossover, um, using a, in, um, but, but speci specifically and intensively, um, it's talking about covering um, does it talk about this in, in compilation? HMI, not that one. No, it must be the other one, but that's fine. We'll, we'll move through. So the word for beyond, when we go into the etymology of the 14th century, it really means uh, to transcend. So we're now we're into a transcend or a transmutive language. I love that it's to climb over. Right. Yeah, we are moving through something. Again, we are building something. Um, it's like dismantling to build. Now, a lot of people in the Christian narrative, they can say, you need to tear down before you can rebuild language. This is now a wall that is transparent, but make no mistake, this is Yada Shalom you're building. It means the way of peace. There was no Yada Shalom. It was always supposed to be the ancient way. It was always just Shalom. Yara just means you are now moving the straight way that flows as water. I now call you peace, right, as a teacher. To teach You're the way flowing peace. in the essence of spirit potential, and now I call you Shalom, right? So in this, first you can speak Hebrew and truly not be one. And the God of Israel is and was a peaceful war campaign. Because it only means war is only in etymology, only means confusion. We'll define this. We are elite spies sent out what was only meant to be an in and out job, which means Barashit, Genesis to Exodus, the first two books. That's the in and that's the out. That's it. And by definition, we're going to define that because Exodus means out. So the knowing of airship. This is what a Hebrew is. A Hebrew is, in a, is in a conscious state of awareness. The knowing of heirship, inheritance through experience of gathering, building and fortifying by the lowering of your head, you find the means to raise it. This is the tug of war that delivers peace. This That's is so good. Well, because we were even talking about, you know, those that are looking at the outside narrative right now that are being pulled by the rattling of the sabers and everything that is going on right now. 
Yeah. But it's really meant to drive us inward to see if that war for those is that, still on the inside right, of us. Absolutely. Because really that manifestation of peace is going into that place of peace yeah. as experience, meaning creating that reality and not allowing that external narrative to rob us of that place of who we are. Right. If anyone has an authority on the inside. Yeah. If, if anyone hasn't done, yes, and absolutely. I agree with that. If anyone hasn't done the job, most likely this war narrative is playing out right now. I pay no attention to it. I just look at it and say, interesting. Um, but anyone that hasn't done what is called to be done to answer the question of who you are, will most likely be drawn into the narrative of war in the lesser uh, estate or in the lesser standing of, of a polemic in the world. You're going to be still wrestling duality with it. But if you're resolved and you are in center and you're well within, then this is but just something that you can watch from a distance because what's coming is the covering. We're in a really amazing time right now. And so don't, uh, I'm not going to say don't, um, I highly recommend that you're not drawn into this lesser narrative. Um, seek the greater narrative, look at the frequency, um, align yourself in thought process, and then create the higher perspective as a frequency. This is now becoming your surrounding as an environment. That's really good. So let's look at this word right here. The whole language is a paradox. It is and it is not, as it is we that become as being it. Again, this is so good right there. Just those so two letters. this is the language, the law language of the law of the sea when we have, um, and again, this is consciousness because consciousness means come together with science to know yourself well. That's the definition of consciousness. And so in this, we are not consciousness yet, or we, some of us are, because we haven't put together necessary components to have the revelation of one being. So really it's, are you awake? Or are you asleep? Right. Hence why. The word Hebrew or Eber has the Ein Resh on the outside. Right. Have you roused have yourself? You roused yourself? And this again goes back to the mind of Christ. Yeah. Have you healed the head wound to remember Zakar, Zakaria, who you are? Right. This low right here, then this this Lamed Olive means low or not. But in its in its dramatria and its measure of potential, it's the exact same word for L, which means God. Yeah. So you are on the journey of teaching and being taught, goaded and directed into the way of one. The one is the measure that is the way of those that are taught. That's God. These are the God taught ones. And so we can say this is a place of deposition where we would gather, because this is the language of law, really. Um, deposition in law, if anyone knows or doesn't know, it means you're gathering and you're not in the court yet. You're outside of the courts and you're sitting in a room with a, law, with a lawyer and he's going, give me your deposition. Give me your eyewitness account. The eyewitness account is based on a sum that is connected to the pointing, the goading and the directing of one in this narrative. So our deposition is our sum total as an eyewitness that would then take the stand and say, yes, your honor, I stand in the fullness of the, your presence. And now I equate myself as all of Lament. I am now seated. I take the stand at the right hand and now I'm seated at the right hand of the judge magistrate father. Which I love the fact that even looking at that through the letters, it's like I have strength in my own authority. Absolutely. This so is it's, it's, it's sovereignty. This is sovereignty. But this right here in that simple little statement, position and deposition, because that's what deposition means. And also it's the same word for disposition, which is our demeanor. What is your demeanor that you're in gathering through fear, uh, through emotions? What are you gathering or not gathering that would render clear the confusion so you'd be resolved as God's peace? It's a rhetorical question. He loves how much, or he knows how much I love those questions. So here's now, this is the paradox <laughs> of the language. So the master of peace intimately knows well the art of war, as peace unveiled is a war statue. Now, that's all Hebrew in that. That's that completely in that word. That's a sound word right there. But yet it's pointing in, in many directions. But this whole language, right, if you know what was being said here, the master of peace intimately knows well. You know yourself well. And what got you there was through confusion. You rendered yourself clear by asking the right question, therefore justifying the answer as peace I'm unveiled because it's the war statute that got me here. What I just said was really the journey between uh, evil or affliction and good. 
Well, and really, and that, okay, just to let you know, just, yeah, I know you, but you already know this, but part of sin is anything that is of the mind that separ separates us from the totality of knowing that we are one with God. Right. So anything, any thought, anything that is separate or keeps us separated from that, which is the total essence of being one is really sin. Right. So just helping to redefine that a little bit. Right. And, and we could go and just freely speak and have spirit flow and just go in a, in a direction. I'm trying to show you, um, I don't want, like, I, yeah, but where does he get that from? What's his foundation? Um, you know, these questions that, Alan has a question too. that, you know, that sometimes seem a little floaty. Well, we need to land the question so we can connect it to the narrative or the intention of why we're saying this. So you are solidified in your own result. Question.